Listen up, boy, I'll be a coach. Teach you how to think different with a new approach. I hope you're taking notes. Haters think it's jokes. They got me fired up, but they don't want to smoke. Mic check one, two, one, two, ladies and gentlemen. You're now in the building with your boy, Coach K, and this is the first five season number six. We're back in the building once again. We have a very, very special guest. I've been trying to get this guy for like not even months, easily, easily, uh, maybe a year or two. And he's been jumping all over the place. If you haven't seen him jumping on your screen or through your feed, you will see him soon. Make sure you guys please check him out because phenomenal talent. Um, I appreciate everyone who tunes in and listens each and every week. We're setting things up to make sure that the energy still keeps flowing. I feel like today's conversation is going to be one of those ones where the energy is going to be flowing. He's already has his strength over size shirt because he's ready to go. <laughs> We're ready to work. He's a certified trainer and coach, a world-class master athlete with 13 plus years of experience, the ultimate high flyer who promotes strength over size through his training programs, a motivator, a motion picture in real time. When I say this man is a movie in real life, Come on now, cheese on bread, bitch. <laughs> and now the head trainer at F45 in the West Island of Montreal. Round of applause for that one. That's what we were about. Main promotion still to come. Exactly. Welcome you, with great appreciation, Mr. Jason, the core Altidore. Thank you, Welcome, sir. my guy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you Two coming through. Words. Two kind words. Thank Listen, you Listen, you almost came at four. I, yeah. I, that was, I was looking at the... Why did I say four? I had no idea why I said four. Uh, am I black people time? Yeah, okay. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, right. like, like, yeah, like, Y'all are wild out here. <laughs> I got things to do. <laughs> well, welcome. How's it going, man? Everything is well. Everything is blessed. You know, it's been a great year, a great yeah. start of the year. Okay. And I'm very grateful for a lot of things, man. That, let's talk about the, Let's. I know we're going to get into more in depth, but mm -hmm. let's talk about this head trainer position at 45. Yes. How did that come about? So Lisa was the former head trainer at F45, um, she changed careers. So she got into a new career, something that she actually worked, um, what she studied for in the past. Okay. And um, her time came and she said, you know what, this is my moment, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it, and uh, she's gonna leave the gym. Okay. And then my name came up in order to be like the next head trainer, and uh, so the, the actual owner, Liza, she reached out to me, she was like, you know, Jason, you'd yeah. be great if you uh, can take this role, like, mm -hmm. what do you think? And I thought about it and I said, you know what, I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm ready for that. Okay. I feel like, you know, the community is great. The gym is great. Yeah. I, I love, you know, just going in there and just coming in and getting that vibe. Yeah. So I see what you guys do in there. Now, my question to this, I, are the classes really like 50 people? <laughs> because here's the thing. I, I know sometimes people, they do this trick, right, where they will record one side and then they'll spin the camera around and record the mm -hmm. other side. And I'm going, are those the same 10 people there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be straight with you. Um, I'm there in the morning, so I'm 6 to about 10.30. Yeah. 6 a.m. is the most busiest time. 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. People okay. come in there, and they're they're ready to go. Okay. And we have 25 and up easily. Wow. Yeah, so that morning shot where you see me like yeah. saying, happy Friday, happy Wednesday, that's at the 6 a.m. class. Ah, that's where it's most packed. So when I spin it around, you see all those people, Yeah. that's the real deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I'm like, is this camera tricks? Come on now. It ain't no, <laughs> but I, that's amazing that you guys yeah. are able to bring that, and now you have on board my guy Kadeem. Shout out to my guy Kadeem, yes, the soldier. Kadeem. Woo, we out yeah, here. He's doing it. He's you know what's funny? They tried to recruit me there some oh, years really? ago. Okay, okay. I said, listen, man, I'm way too busy. But I hear you. I hear you. but I see that it has brought forth many blessings for you. Yes, and for others who are there. Um, what's the vibe like in the gym? Because it, it seems like a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. Mm. But what's the real real vibe the like? The vibe, it's there? the community. Honestly, okay. the, it, it feels like you're in a schoolyard where everybody okay. knows each other. They know they know each other's kids. They mm. know like, family members. Mm. There's sometimes parents that come with their their, their daughters and sons, nice. siblings, um, and you know one person will know like a cousins of a cousin of, mm. of a friend. So it's just that dynamic of the community and that's gotcha. what i feel when i go in there I, I just feel like i'm in a schoolyard okay and it's great it goes in from there yeah, yeah it goes from that well i want to send a special shout out to lisa lisa i know we've been trying to link up for quite some time mm. as well we we're supposed to go for a run some time ago but now you're like sitting in the office so it's gonna be a little <laughs> bit shout out lisa but we gotta make sure that you keep your keep your name out there because your energy is obviously unmatched mm. um let's talk about your background my guy yes you're a child of haitian and Bayesian parents correct correct how did they how did they interact? <laughs> because I feel like it's two different. <laughs> two that you have low key, you have like laid back people, and then you have like I know, energy. I like know. How does this come together? Oh, man, you know what? It just worked. I mean, my yeah. mom, she came here at a very young age. Okay. Um, to be honest, even how they met, it's like it's fuzzy. But <laughs> they met. My mom was always into Haitian people. Got you. And um, you know, long story short, they they he already knew a bit of English. Mm -hmm. Mind you, his English is still kind of. It's a bit yeah, of work, <laughs> but he gets by, and my mom, you know, she got caught up with it, and yeah. uh, they they hooked up, and yeah. 
you know, the rest was kind of history. And the rest kind of history. Yeah, yeah. And you're your only child. Or you have siblings. I have siblings. Okay. Yeah, we're six. Actually. Six. Yeah, my mom she has four kids. Yeah, and uh, my my siblings kind of share like with the same dad. Okay, but when all we're we're six. She's we're six. on. Yeah, she's yeah. on bread, my guy. <laughs> Lather that up, my guy. Family, <laughs> Six yeah. people. Six people. Ooh, I just heard an example. Actually, funny talking about large families. I just heard an example uh, of a couple in Rwanda. Uh, the do- the wife was talking about her experience as a child um, because of the genocide. Mm. People were children were orphaned, right? And the, her parents took in kids. So, as a total in their home was twenty five. Jeez. Um. 25? How do you fit 25 people in one? Because it was, she had, I think she had four siblings. No, she had four sisters and five brothers. Okay. And then the others that were orphans plus the parents. 25. 25. I'm sitting here going, man, having like myself, my wife, my mother in law has a lot of people, but 25? That's a classroom, man. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Salute to anybody who's able to do that. That's what I gotta say. Mm. Um, But growing up, Growing up in Montreal, mm-hmm. what was the experience like for you? I know a lot of people have different take on what their what their experience was yeah, like. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was tough. Yeah. I had a tough childhood growing up. Okay. Um, you know, there was verbal abuse, yeah. a bit of abuse here and there. Mm. Um, just struggling and living in, in areas where it's not, um, it doesn't really get you out your potential. Yeah. And we moved around a lot. Okay. So I lived in, I grew up in Park X. Okay. And uh, we stayed in, you know, one place, two place every couple of years or so. And uh, it was a it was a hard upbringing. You know, my mm-hmm. mom, she was a single mother of four kids. And we tried to make ends meet. You know, we tried to do what we could. Um, I always had the love for sports. So yeah. despite what everything happening, I always wanted to be sure that I was doing what I loved. It was mm-hmm. to move. Mm-hmm. You know, it started with soccer. I played soccer for a couple of years as a kid. I loved soccer. I thought I wanted to be a soccer player. Yeah. And then that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of moved on to different sports. Okay. I got into a bit of basketball. Mm. Um, I remember doing handball in, in uh, elementary school, mm-hmm. dodgeball, and then it was fast forward in high school. It was track and field. Okay, that was like that was my thing. Yeah, that you, I loved. You ran hundred meters, two hundred meters, hundred meters, uh, sixty meters, two hundred, sixty meters, the sixty meters. Yes, that's indoor, indoor. Okay, track, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We ran sixty meters, okay. two hundred, yeah. um, and then I was into long jump, mm. high jump. Yeah, and um, yeah, and even triple jump. Yeah, triple jump too. And you didn't make it to co- to Olympics for Barbados? Because I'm just saying, <laughs> listen, I, I know people, if you haven't yet seen his visual, this video, jumping. <laughs> I'm looking at the box. I saw the last one you posted, like jumping through your feed. And I go, I don't know if he's going to make it. And then you just see your feet just go boom. And I'm like, man. This guy is out here. I got a lot of messages about that. People telling like, you really thought I was, wasn't going to make it? Like, yeah, you looked, you're going to miss halfway, but then your feet came out. And I made it, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's all that training that's there. Correct. For correct. sure. Did you run relay as well? I ran relay, yeah. yeah. We what did 100 meters. 100 what runner were you? Sorry again? What runner were you? I was the, the anchor. For last one, okay. That was the sense. last one. I was the anchor. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. They always put the fastest people at the end. Correct. It's always, right. for all you track people out here, okay, second and last runner are the fastest people. Right. The first runner gets you started. Gets the third is last. Started. I was actually third runner. Third runner. Third, but uh, third is good. You but did. you know what? Because, yeah. I was, because I'm not tall. I can like curve that. That's it. You need a person that runs a good bend. Yeah. So when I pass a baton to my guy, it was just game over. Was, yeah. Once you catch that, I love that. Actually. And he was big. Ba- no, he's Jamaican. I was going to say, oh, he's Beijing too. Okay, that makes okay. sense. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So who would you say had the biggest impact on your, on your upbringing? Was it your siblings, your family, uh, your teachers, your parents? I would say my mom. Mm. Um, I would say even some of my teachers, okay. you know, especially more in, in high school, yeah. I would say kind of helped me because like I said, I mean, my dad wasn't, he wasn't really around. Yeah. So my mom, she had to kind of be the breadwinner for everything. She had mm. to do as much as she could mm. and she did her best. You know, no one can, nobody knows how to be a parent. Yeah. You have to learn how to be a parent. Yeah. And she did what she could. And uh, so it was kind of like little bits and, and pieces everywhere. I learned from her, I learned from my, my teachers and uh just kind of understanding the meaning of life and yeah. where I needed to go, my career. Yeah. Did I did I want to be in sports? You mm. know, as a kid, I I loved going to want to be in the Olympics one day, mm. and I knew that I also had to make money. Yeah. So I also loved computers. Okay. And I actually got into computers first. Okay. Before I got into uh, fitness and, and all those things. And all those other things yeah. too. So you could have been in IT. Yeah. Or building computers or Correct. something along that line. Right. It was more um, computer graphics. Okay. Yeah. Computer graphics, yeah. web development design okay do you do some of that still now 
Not too much. I mean, I, I do use them for my videos, okay. and that's why I, I learn how to do my edits because okay. I've learned the, the programs to do them. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this yeah. too, guys. Like, <laughs> your edits and stuff. I ask people, yo, you need to show me what the deal is, and they're like, watch YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that's not I said, enough. Jason, just tell me what it is. He goes, no, don't worry, I'll give you some tips. Correct. Because I can't, I can't be out here looking like a loser. No, my, you but we keep things moving. Um, so most people they base their business or their brand mm -hmm. on like several different things right. you know one being a personal experience i could say a lot of my energy came from being a person with low self-esteem mm. i had issues like with that body image and stuff like that Correct. um for your own from your own personal experience like what has helped you to connect with other clients and to build the brand that you've built so far and i feel it's on the same wavelength because i feel growing up i was very very small very mm -hmm. skinny mm -hmm. and it was always a, a bother for me because as you get older you're a man you know you're like, oh you're so skinny you're, yeah. you're this you're that and you feel like okay i need to build more character i feel i need to get bigger i need to get stronger mm -hmm. so my vision on when i first started training was i just want to build muscle i want to get big so i would go to the gym do all the tricks that they would say to do and this and that and i, I didn't really find myself so i was like okay well, where, where is this really going for me like, yeah. yeah okay i picked up some size now but now what? Mm -hmm. So, you know, now I'm wearing a shirt. Strength, strength oversize. Stretching, and stretching the shirt out, guys. <laughs> stretching the shirt. <laughs> strength oversize. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> he's like, you know, strength. <laughs> oversize. Uh, okay. So, there's actually a lot of meaning behind it. And yeah. uh, it started in 2013 okay. when I was um, mostly on YouTube doing videos. Yeah. And I realized um, the strength oversize, it just means that the strength takes prominence over the size gotcha. and size is, a, is kind of like the umbrella so if you see that strength sits over size mm -hmm. and size can mean you either being trying to lose weight mm -hmm. or you're trying to gain weight okay. but the emphasis should be on your size first and then with size every uh, with strength everything comes okay so the size will come got you in that sense so it's the opposite because a lot of people today think the other way the, correct they think size first and they go well i'm gonna get strong i'm gonna lose this weight first mm -hmm. then i'll put on muscle i'm like doesn't really make sense, but correct. But uh, but I understand the the concept of it. Mm -hmm. You're taking your own personal experience and applying it to that. Correct. So how many? Like I I mean I noticed in your notes like you've helped over a hundred people like yeah in that 13 year span. What's the what's that one experience that you'd say was like the pinnacle, the highlight for you that made you go yo you know what I know I'm doing the right thing. Oh my gosh, oh there's so many. <laughs> Honestly, it's just uh, a lot of it relates to injury. Okay. Injury and, you know, body image, obviously, mm -hmm. because for the funny thing about the two is injury and body image kind of go together because yeah. body image, meaning, let's say if you're trying to lose weight, mm -hmm. there's always that first step and it's yeah. the hardest step. Yeah. Injury is the same thing. It's, it's a humbling experience. So yeah. you could be a top athlete. The moment you get injured, you're starting back from square one. Yeah. So you're both on that level of square one, mm -hmm. you know, different levels of square one, but you're mm -hmm. still there. Yeah. How do I build myself back up? to become a better athlete? Yeah. And how do I build myself up to be a better version of myself? Got you. And I feel every time I see those experiences, whether someone is injured, whether they're just starting on their journey, that's when I'm the most fired up. Because mm -hmm. it's like, this is fresh. Now they get to experience and appreciate mm -hmm. everything they're learning in their journey in order to get to that point. Got you. And it's always about staying in their lane yeah. and seeing how they can create the best version of who they are yeah. and not saying, that's the body I want. Yeah. That's how fast I want to run. That's how high I want to jump. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's inspiration. Mm -hmm. But in the end of the day, you only just take yourself. Nobody else. Got you. And that's really what just took it over. Awesome. Yeah. And a lot of people have benefited from that. Yeah. As we can see, yes. you, you know, you're working with that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your clients being your mom. Mm, my mom. Who saw some videos of, of her training and stuff. <laughs> how did that come about? Because I know we talked about this just briefly. Like, Correct. you tell your parents, yo, you need to be doing this. And they're like, man, listen. <laughs> exactly, man. It's, I raised you. you know, it, okay, yep. okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <you> know? <laughs> but so how's that experience been with her? Honestly, it's been very good. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, it wasn't. And she knows it too. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what, part of the reasons why I even started this journey and started documenting it you know, on YouTube and yeah. Instagram was to inspire her. Okay. To get her to say, mom, look, this is the things you could do. Like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing. And I'm loving it. And yeah. I'm, you know, try to make an effort, try to do. But then I realized that was the problem. Okay. I was telling her, do this, do that, do yeah. that. And, you know, most parents, they don't want to hear their offspring say, hey, you know, I born you. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> it's like they don't want to hear that. And yeah, they're not yeah. comfortable and all the all these things. Right. And I could also, oh, you know what? Everything happens in this time. Mm. Let me just keep doing what I'm doing. Mm. Let me just give her information. Yeah. Because with information, then she can decide what she wants to do with it. Gotcha. If I keep telling her, mom, you need to run. She's like. Okay, now I feel like I'm forced. Now I feel like it's a chore. Mm -hmm. I got to get up 
and go outside and run. Mm-hmm. I say, mom, running does X, Y, and Z. Mom, training helps you X, Y, and Z. You want to be alive to see your, your grandkids become older, and mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you got to move. You got to yeah. be able to help yourself and, and, and be independent, not dependent. Mm-hmm. When I feed her this type of information, mm. then the wheels start turning. Like, hey, I'm getting older. Yeah, I realize I need this for myself. Yeah. One day she just clicked and said, "Jason, mm. I'm ready to train." Mm. I said, "Mom, when we do this, there is no turning back. Mm. You have to start, and it's the rest of your life." It's the rest of life. Yeah. That was it. 20, 2020, I believe. So it's kind okay. of like a, during COVID time. Nice man. She nice. Just stuck with it and just went off. And she's making progress. She's making shout progress. Shout out to mom, man. Shout out to mom. Yeah, man. Shout out to mom. That's what's up. <laughs> yes, All good, man. <laughs> He's not getting excited. <laughs> strength over size over here. That's a strength. Knocking, my, <laughs> knocking microphones over. <laughs> Speaking of strength, listen, man. Mm. Like, when you watch clients get stronger. Correct. And you see their progress happen. Does it does it surprise you? Or does it, like, shock you sometimes when you see someone do something? You go, whoa, you can do that now? Okay. Because I know they're shocked. Right. But, like, are you ever shocked when you see a person's progress? Sometimes I'm shocked at, at the, um, the magnitude of the progress. Okay. How quick they progress. But okay. I, I, you just know. Yeah. You know, when you train somebody, yeah. it's like this is essentially this is how we are as humans. Yeah, we are are made to be stronger. You right. know, when we start as a baby, become an adult, even if you don't train at all in our entire life, mm-hmm. you are gonna build more muscle. You're gonna be stronger because yeah. your muscles are bigger. Yeah, and it's now what are my capabilities? What can I do mm-hmm. with this strength? Mm-hmm. How can I improve it each time? Yeah, when I see that, it's just it's a fuel of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Love what it. has been your greatest transition? So, not transition, but like. Mm-hmm. I hate using the word transformation because people mm. put a lot of energy behind that Correct. transformation stuff. Correct. But as far as the clientele or even for yourself, what's been the biggest like 180 that you've seen a person make? Oh, wow. Um, I would probably say when it comes to lifestyle and eating because uh-huh. we all know it's the hardest thing. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that there's certain things that they have been doing. Mm-hmm. And it's breaking that habit. Yeah. And then when they actually break it, and then they see that result. So, for example, it could be as not eating enough mm-hmm. or always eating fast food or, mm-hmm. f- or foods that are comfort. And they realize that this is what's slowing them down. They yeah. don't realize that, okay, but I'm still getting protein. I'm still having this, that. Yes, you're still having those things, but mm-hmm. you're not realizing all the other stuff that comes with it. Yeah. And these are the things that are slowing you down. And then you're realizing, why am I so tired in the morning? Yeah. Why can't I get up? Why can't I... Uh, why am I so tired at the end of the day? Why am mm. I? It's all these little elements, and it, it all came back down to food. Yeah. And once they get that light bulb on, yeah. And then they're just they make the, change. They make happen. the change. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's such a struggle. Speaking as a trainer as well, mm. it's such a struggle sometimes to explain that. Because you have to let people just figure it out. Correct. To see for themselves, Correct. like if you make this change, you can expect this to happen. Um, one thing I always say w- with people is that I don't guarantee results. Mm. I don't say, guarantee if you do this, this is going to happen. I could say, guarantee if you do 10 push-ups a day, you'll get stronger. Correct. Guarantee if you do 10 squats a day, you'll get stronger. Mm. But I can never say, I guarantee that if you do this combination of this, 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 this is going to work. Because everybody's body is going to be different. Thank you. You have to learn to adapt and adjust and stuff. But yes. a person also has to ask themselves, how much work do they have to, or do they want to put in? Correct. And do they actually want to? There's a there's a book that I'm reading um, uh change your paradigm change your life mm-hmm. and there's a quote in the book from a, a there's a, a man who made the first rocket ship to go to the moon right as a german developer and the president asked him uh how what would it take to create a rocket ship that would get you to the moon safely and back mm. he said the will to do it mm. and i realized that if people have the will to do stuff correct anything is possible correct so the more that that could be, it does encourage, and a person sees that, yep. they can make a change happen for them. Um, and obviously, you're firsthand able to see that with the people that you work with. Um, other than that, like what what initially got you then started to say, okay, you know what, I want to be a trainer now. This is the direction I'm going to mm-hmm. go. What was the what was the big step for you? Um, so I've always wanted to be some type of coach, even okay. back in high school. Yeah, and I remember you know being in track and field and everything, and I said if track and field didn't work out. I want to coach because mm-hmm. I want to help people. Mm-hmm. I want to see their potential and I want them to excel in that potential. Gotcha. And, you know, I just remember getting into my computer graphics field and mm-hmm. just, you know, being in front of the desk, just typing away and just getting back into to fitness eventually. And, you know, being in the gym and seeing just all types of beings and everybody just having different stories mm-hmm. of what path that they want to go into. And as I was getting better in my own fitness, mm-hmm. I'm talking to them and telling them my experience 
And they're also teaching me at the same time. I said, mm. you know what? Mm. We got to help the world. Like, yeah. We can't obviously physically help everybody, but yeah. the goal is to help as many as we can. Yeah. So we say that, help the world. Mm. And I, I just feel as the years just kept going by during that time, I just felt like that was my calling. Yeah. That I've always said this as a kid, and now I just need to reach that potential. And, mm. I, and I realized that being a personal trainer, being a coach, wasn't that aligning with my uh, mm. with my goal and my and my field? Okay. Yeah. And you made it work from there. I made it work. Yeah. Thirteen years plus, man. Yeah, man. Time flies, huh? It flies, boy. Oh. Flies. Do you remember your first client? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it was friends and family at the gym. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That they were they were my my source because it's like Jason, what are you doing? I want to do this. It's like okay, come to the gym with me and yeah. we'll we'll train. Yeah. So who trained who? You trained Wanli, or Wanli trained you? We've never really trained each other. No? No. Yeah, we've always kind of trained together. Yeah. Because we, we both kind of love that field. Yeah. And, you know, the moment that we had time for each other, we just kind of just came together and we did some collabs and everything. But yeah. we never trained each other. Okay. Yeah, interesting. So there was no one there. Yeah, yeah no. It yeah. <laughs> wasn't anything like that. Shout out to my guy Wanley, a.k.a. Yeah, Big Poppy, a.k.a. The Cyborg. <laughs> man, put your shirt back on. Because, <laughs> because. Embarrass, embarrassing up? people out here with the... <laughs> Making me feel inadequate out here on my like dad. He's, he's doing it. I dude. see I see a video with him and I go, I'm gonna start doing some pushes. Right <laughs> so much respect to him because he's worked so hard for it. And yeah. And you know, obviously growing up we're cousins, so I've seen him when he was petite mm. and how he is now. It's like Yeah, you're like putting that work. You see his little youth now, he's like a oh, big man. <laughs> <laughs> and we're the same height growing up. And he gets shot <laughs> he gets up. Shot. Like, okay, you're There's going always up. that one person in the family. Yeah. So you're like, oh okay, I'm taller than you, okay, bet. And yeah. You, you blink. <laughs> Is. Uh, tapping into the fitness industry because that's mm-hmm. what we cover. Yes. Um, you've seen a lot of changes come oh my over time. Yeah. What have been some trends that you've seen that you've been like, I'm feeling this, or the ones that you're like, eh, I could do away with this, or this could be done away with, or I, I hope at some point that this is gonna die. Oh my gosh. Point. Yeah. Let's get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> this, 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 like, this is where we're about. Let's get I into think, the, the details here. I think the worst and. Many people can attest to this. Mm. Is is the waist trainers? That's a start. I mean, I'm going there. I have to. And what? So what really bothers me about this yeah. is the people like us, like the trainers okay. who understand how the body works and everything. Mm-hmm. The ones they're the ones that are selling it. Yeah. Those are the ones that really get me annoyed because yeah. they know how the body works. Yeah. And they know that this is not going to do the job. Mm. What they're trying to portray, saying yes, if you wear this, you're going to lose this amount of inches, this amount of weight. It's the weight, uh, the waist trainer that's doing it, mm. and it's not. No, they know that it's not, mm. and they're still selling it to people. Yeah, and just taking the money and saying, "Yeah, do it." Uh, so that boils my skin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 terrible that we get caught in these uh mm-hmm. type of thing. Anyway, I, I hear you though. You I know, had a I had a conversation about someone about that before, right? and they were like, <laughs> "Why are you being such a hater?" I said, "Do you know what that does to your organs?" Mm-hmm. Over a period of time, everything shifts, man. But okay, you know, if that's and, what you want to do, then cool. <laughs> and funny, funny you say that, that mm. because there's people who, if they don't agree with mm. you, they automatically call you a hater. Yeah. And it's not about being a hater, it's about telling the truth. We're just trying to educate you. And, correct. And, you know, you could agree to disagree. Mm. Everybody has their opinions about certain things, but there's also certain truths. Yeah. And it can't be automatic. You don't agree with me? Yeah, you're a hater. Yeah. Do you often get clients send you TikTok videos and say, Jason, look, this TikTok told me this? <laughs> Sorry. Or TikTok- I knew you were going to say that. I will because, <laughs> listen, man, I have the ultimate TikToker at home. <laughs> Ooh, I love yeah. my wife, by the way. But mm-hmm. she just sends me a video and then a video and a video and a video. And I go, okay. Yeah. And what are we going to do about this? <laughs> <laughs> man. 100% yes. Yeah. 100%. So what's your reaction to that? Like, do you do you explain to them? Like, do you acknowledge what they're sending you and then explain, like, this is the details of this Correct. or is it kind of like a shutdown like yo don't send that to me man <laughs> no, I, you know what i always appreciate that they do send it because yeah. they're sending it because two things either they they feel like it does work mm-hmm. and also they trust my opinion and it, it's important for me to tell them that you know what this why it works and it doesn't and these are the reasons yeah so i do tell them as crazy as it is mm-hmm. and even if i roll my eyes I still want you to send these things. Yeah. But yes, I do react. Yeah. React the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Man, tell them, like, don't send me this, okay? Man. <laughs> Wasting my time. Kiss, <laughs> kiss, kiss my teeth hard on that one. <laughs> Just the other day, actually, it's funny. A, a trainer, my, my colleague, he sent me a video that said, these two guys were talking. And he mm. said, uh, studies, have, studies have shown. I love when it starts with that. Studies have shown that when you take rice, white rice, and you cook it in coconut oil, it cuts the calorie count by 70%. 
I've never heard of that. I've never heard of this in my life. But he wow. says studies have shown. Okay. So he goes, you believe this? I said, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But somebody is going to take that and not do the background check Correct. and run with it so far. Yep. And that's the part that I find the most frustrating. Yes. Is don't present something to me and then go, but this is fact. Right. Do you know that for a fact? Mm -hmm. If you don't know it for a fact, then you can't say. Correct. A lot of things that I've tried, like, you know, you hear about, you learn about, and you go, okay, I'll try this and see. I tried it myself, mm -hmm. give it enough time to evaluate it and go, okay, this is this is what I felt, this is what I didn't feel, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So now I have an educated opinion on it. Correct. But someone just tells me, okay, cook your rice in coconut oil. Trust me, it's fine. <laughs> Eat all the rice you want. <laughs> It cuts the, it cuts of this and then it, it like reduces all this stuff. So then you, you can eat rice now. You're like, oh, okay. Oh my. You see, like, but it's exactly that. So hear what they say. Hmm. Do the research. Find out about it. Yeah. Know all the ins and outs. Don't just hear one thing and then like, it's, just like you said, yeah. people they'll take a grain literally of salt mm. or a rice, a grain of rice, grain of rice, <laughs> and they'll they'll run with that and they'll make it out of something and then now yeah. it's a new trend all over again all of a sudden. and everybody follows this and oh now you got to do this and follow this way and follow that way because this is the right way now yeah yeah um another trend to ask you about so mm -hmm. <clears throat> being that we're both people in the gym with cameras yes uh, you know we record our clients we record classes and stuff correct or we do record workouts mm -hmm. what's your take on the 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 new culture of like people coming with tripods setting things up i know there's a lot of interaction when it comes to like there have been women who have uh, recorded guys like staring at them, right, or vice versa, stuff like that. What's your feel on that? The thing is, and this is the problem with it. I feel, I feel it's great to bring your cameras and record yourself because it's the feedback you're getting of how you look like when you're training. Mm -hmm. And I think now we're losing that essence of what's the, the true reason why you're bringing the camera to record yourself. Yeah. Now it's about, okay, I want to do my little flex. I want to pose. I want to this. I want to mm -hmm. kind of showcase something and, and show people some type of image. Yeah. And 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 now the people are doing things purposely to get a certain reaction, yeah. which I'm not down for at all. Gotcha. I feel like, what are, you, what are you going to the gym for? What's, yeah. what's your purpose? Yeah. Are you there to train? Are you there to make a little laugh? You're in there. You kind of make fun of somebody. Mm. Why are you wasting time for it? Yeah. You know? So... I'm not about that. Not about that. At all. Yeah. Do you kick people's uh, cameras off when you see? I'm not going to lie. I'll look at the person. Now I'm like looking back. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Okay, no camera. And then I walk. So I'm not against that. I just feel if it's not disturbing the people around you, yeah. they can just go and do their workout. Or if you ask them, hey, do you mind looking in the background? Are you okay with that? Yeah. That's all good. And I, and if people walk through when I'm recording, yeah, it's like, look, I'm not going to tell them, hey, go around because I'm thinking. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to wait for them. I'm going to yeah. go. Or they say, look, just give me one second. Mm. I'm going to do my thing and then let them pass. And people got to understand, you can edit this stuff out. You can edit. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's just cut scene. Correct. Cut scene is fine. Correct. It's not going to be like the worst thing in the world. But people do get a little bit um like that. Social media and, and uh, a lot of your stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely changed in, in many good ways, I would mm. say. Okay. Um, you know, when I first got into Instagram, mm. I wanted to connect with... Uh, you just see this whole world of, okay, all these people are doing fitness. It's mm. like, can yeah. I connect with them? Connect with them. Yeah. You know, I wanted to meet up, do collabs, doing mm. all these, even online collabs, which yeah. I think was was great. And I, I just feel that it opened a lot of doors and it showcased a lot of things that even I was limited to. It's like, oh, okay, maybe you could do things this way and mm. that way. Mm. Maybe I can work on this a little bit more. And, um, you know, especially like reaching out to the Caribbean, you know, not having social media, the way you would do there, you have to actually go to the Caribbean. Yeah. So the fact that I, I interact with a lot of people from the Caribbean, you know, in Europe, different parts of the world. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, it, it's really, it's opened up a lot of doors and it, yeah. it really showcased um, a whole new world of what fitness can be out there. And it's not yeah. just limited to what we do in America. Because yeah. if you, the way you see how certain trends are here, it's very different the way people train elsewhere in the world. Okay. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not the same concept. Yeah. It's not the same drive sometimes, okay. you know. Okay. It's not like, um, what's the, what's the way to, what's the best way to ex explain it? It's not, it's not something that's demanded of you to do. Mm. It's kind of like a, yeah, you should go to the gym and you could go work Correct. out. You could whatever. Correct. So it's more of like a leisure thing as opposed to more of mandatory. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which I find that kind of funny. Mm. I find it interesting, especially here in North America, that that's so, not a mandatory thing, but you have so many gyms, so many fitness centers, and people are still sick. Yep. <laughs> They're still sick. And that's wild. It, it's, it's a good point to bring up because people think, oh, I work out. Why am I still sick? What are you doing outside of the gym? Yeah. 
that's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, when everything happened with, you know what, mm-hmm. and the world kind of shut down, mm-hmm. it's like, what are you feeding your body? Yeah. Because in the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. What yeah. you feed, how well you sleep, and then you train. Your training is breaking the body down. Yeah. So we got to build it back up with something. Build it back up with something and manage your stress. Mm-hmm. Speaking of stress, how do you manage your stress? Because I, I, listen, I know you're you're an even kill guy. Right. You're, you're pretty chill. But like, you must have moments where you get Stress and anxious. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, but how do you manage that? What do you do? Um, I take moments sometimes. I just step away from whatever I'm in, whatever situation I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's from the computer, mm-hmm. just take moments for myself. Uh, you know, listen to a nice sermon in the background. Got you. Um, I talk. I speak to my fiance, for example. I speak to my mom. I'll speak mm-hmm. to somebody who just just to kind of change atmosphere in the air. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, training. Mm-hmm. Training does everything. Got it you. really just helps you give you that clear vision. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I have my place set up in my room where I can just work out there. Yeah. So if I feel like I'm too stressed, I'll just say, you know what? Let me just play some soca music, grab a kettlebell, whatever, yeah. go on the bars, do a few pull-ups. Do a few things there. Yeah. Okay. Does, you, does your fiance train too? She does. Not the same way, obviously, as I train. Yeah. She's a, she's an interior design architect. Okay. So okay. she she does my morning classes with me. Okay. Yeah. That's so what's up. Uh, That's yeah, what's up. She, she, she See, ladies, the top. ladies, listen. <laughs> you want to support your man? <laughs> Work out with them, okay? <laughs> right. Yeah, she's very does. important. She's right. doing well. She's doing her best. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's good, man. That's yeah. good. You gotta keep that healthy connection. I've been married. Listen, this year I've been married fifteen years. Wow, respect. And in year fifteen, my wife has never been so serious about the gym. <laughs> yes, see that. But you gotta wait. Yep. Sometimes you gotta just wait it out. Correct. Be patient and wait, fellas. If you're waiting for your girlfriend, your wife to come to the gym with you, trust me, it's gonna happen. Because <laughs> it's not because she was like, oh man. I see him training this lady, that lady. I I feel a bit of a weight. Nothing of that nature. She woke up one day and she said, you know, I really got to take advantage of this free trainer I have. And I said, okay. (laughs) You're good to go now? Okay. No. And before the longest time, like you said with your mom, you would tell her, like, you need to do this. And for the longest time, I was telling her, you need to do this, you need to do this. I stopped talking. I said, no, I ain't saying nothing no more. I would get up, go to work, boom. Now she gets up. I train, she's the first client I train first person I see in the morning I train her everything works out and she's making progress she's making steps but it, it didn't take me to coerce her I didn't. I couldn't force her correct. she had to decide on her own correct yeah. so everybody has to make that decision for themselves yep. to understand what their reason why is and we've talked about this before but she just never really thought about it in depth because her when a person has always been a certain way for so long they don't feel like they have much work to do correct and then one day you can't Tip of your skirt, and you're going, Whoa, what's going on? Here? What's going on? But it's so funny because even with her improvement in strength, so we're doing this challenge of uh, 2,000 pushes for the month. So it's like 66, 66 pushes of the day. Wow. And um, I'm in the kitchen with her this morning, and <laughs> she was demonstrating something to me, and she pushed me. But she pushed me hard. <laughs> and I actually moved, and I was like, Wow. <laughs> you actually moved. That's and funny. I said, I said uh, Wow, okay. And she's like, I wasn't even pushing you that hard. I said, You sure? <laughs> Her one inch punch was like, I was like into the fridge. I said, damn, <laughs> gotta watch out for her. She might, oof. but that's good. I can that's use good. her as a bodyguard. That's it, Back me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, just in case. We're Guys, we're live, we're live right now with my man Jason the Core out the door. Listen, man, I really do appreciate you coming through. We're not done yet. We're, we're still yeah, in yeah. the conversation here. Mm-hmm. Um, what I want to touch on actually was uh, anything you have coming up as far as like, I know you had a trip coming up. Yes. Ta- talk about that. So Barbados, uh, we usually have a fitness retreat every year. Yeah. Um, we started in 2014. It's mm-hmm. actually me and Tina. Okay. Tina Casava. She actually organizes it. She kind of she started it. Mm-hmm. And when I joined on board with her in 2013, mm-hmm. the following year, she asked me, "Well, look, I go to Barbados every year. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about doing this retreat. Do you want in?" I was mm-hmm. like, "I never done a retreat before. Like, yeah. sure, let's go." Yeah. First year, we just gathered a few of us people in Montreal. We're about ten in total. Mm-hmm. Found a place. Mm-hmm. We trained every morning. Mm-hmm. So, we were there seven days. We trained for six days. Mm. You know, went to a few excursions. We we talked. We enjoyed. We trained. Mm. It was a great first year experience. Nice. And over the years, we kind of added a little more element to it. So we done some workshops mm. while we train. Mm. Um, we would like get together and and talk about fitness and lifestyle change. Mm. And it grew over the years. Yeah. You know, it was pretty busy up until COVID. We had about eighteen people. Okay. At some point, yeah. Nice. COVID nice. hit. Things kind of messed up a little bit. Yeah. And we're trying to get back onto it. Okay. So. Wanted to happen this year. Yeah. So when is it? When is it going to be? 
It's uh, May 19th to the 26th. May 19th to 26th, yeah. guys. Make sure that you guys uh, check out Jason the Core Altador. And if you want some details on that trip, it uh, sounds like a phenomenal experience. Yeah. I, should tell my, I should tell Brianna. Because, yeah. you know, uh, we need somewhere to go on vacation. And <laughs> yes. It might be a good idea to just kind of jump on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we discuss a lot on this show is about adversity, challenges, trials, and stuff. A lot of people are going through a lot of difficult situations right now in their mm -hmm. own personal life. Um, but adversity is obviously the, uh, once it's transferred, transferred the right way, it helps you to build resilience. What in your, what experience in your life has, uh, been a major adverse situation or somewhere close to that, that has allowed you now to build a sense, a level of resilience that helps you along your way today? Wow. Um, I would have to say my upbringing. Okay. Um, you know, I was, I, I'm still, I'm pretty stubborn, Yeah. but you know, when I was younger, in my early 20s, I felt like I was a man. Mm -hmm. I felt like I knew a lot that, um, you know, you don't have to tell me much. I, I know things. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Mm -hmm. And I got a quick humbling experience. It's mm -hmm. like you you think you know everything. You don't. Yeah. You really don't know everything at all. And yeah. it's just appreciating the th things that happen in your life mm -hmm. that help you become a better person. Got you. And a lot of it had to do with, um, you know, my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, my little sister, you know, she, you know, quick little rundown about yeah. that. Um, I actually wanted nothing to do with my little sister. Uh -huh. And she knows this. Okay. Because it was my, my dad and his wife's uh, kid. Ah, okay. So I was like, I don't want anything with him. I don't want anything with her. I don't mm. care about her. Mm. And it was very selfish. Mm. Very selfish. Mm -hmm. And um, some, forget what year we started talking back to my dad. I, and he had brought up that my little sister was reaching out and she wanted to know about her brothers mm. and her sister. And I was like, I don't care for this child. Like, why mm. is he reaching out? And I said, you know what, okay, fine. Let's go and see her and see what she's about. So I went over to the house, uh, spoke to her. Mm. Very, very cute. You know, she was probably about seven at the time. Yeah. And she just kept, she was so fixated about how I looked so much at my dad. That's uh, all she kept saying. Yeah. Because she was more friendly. She was like, did his arm, did his arm, did his arm. But like, yes, I know I look like him. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And long story short, um, that experience allowed me to forgive him. Okay. And I never forgave him through words. I forgave him through action. Yeah. You know, he did what he did. Mm. And in the moment I kept holding on to those things, mm. it actually affected me because it's like, what am I holding on to? He, I'm grown now. Yeah. He's his own person. I got to move on for myself. So I got to forgive. Gotcha. And it got me closer to her. And nice. thank God, you know, we still have a great relationship now. And now she's going to be 25 this year. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's, wow. She, she's, she's big now. Okay. And, you know, we still have a great relationship. We yeah. still are, are close. And that experience taught me that, you know, the things that you hold back mm -hmm. is just going to never allow you to go forward in life okay. at all. Okay. And, and you have to let go of things. Yeah. You can't keep grudges. You can't hold things in yourself because you're just going to, it's going to affect your health mentally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it did that. And it did for sure. Yeah, it did that. But you were able to move on from that and, yeah, and, and I was accept. Able to move on. Mm -hmm. That's good, Accept, man. move on, and, um, you know, it, it, just, it just carries you through. Yeah. You're a much stronger and better person that way. Yeah. Mental health is obviously something that is a, is a large talking point for a lot of people, mm -hmm. too. Um, during that period of time, COVID, I know that a lot of people were affected by that. Did you find that that also affected you as well? Uh, did COVID kind of hit you a bit hard also too, like it did other people? Or yeah. were you able to just kind of go, you know what? This is life. It is what it is. Mm. Boom. Move forward. In the beginning, it felt like a vacation. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're off for a week. Oh, we're off two weeks. Okay, this mm. is good. And then I realized, wait a minute. All of the things that I was doing, you know, as a trainer, mm. all that was just taken away. Yeah. You know, I was in group classes. Mm. People seeing them regularly. And now suddenly... They're gone. Yeah. I'm only limited to online mm. or the very few that were still coming to my house. Mm. And it it was hard. Mm. I, I realized that I was losing motivation. Yeah. And I wasn't, you know, out and about. I wasn't walking as much as I used to. I was more in the house. And it's like, now I understand. Mm -hmm. I get that people, if they don't move and they don't follow the routine and they just fall off, mm -hmm. this is where they get trapped into. They feel like they're always trapped. Yeah. So it, I got hit hard. Yeah, 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 but you were able to overcome that. I so was. I, what did you do during that time that yeah. helped you to keep keep going forward? I, I started training outside, even okay. in the winter time. Yeah, I, I remember that year specifically. I would just, no matter how cold it was, mm. put on my gloves, put on my suit, and I would run. There's a track nearby my house. Yeah, I would go to the track and I would train in the track mm. in the snow, and I felt good after. I felt like I was getting that rhythm back. And yeah, I said, you know what? This is what I need to keep because, and this is funny. I always say the gym is not a need. 
the gym is a luxury. Mm. And, you know, it's great to go to the gym. Mm. You get a lot of good stuff out there, but it's not an excuse, the only excuse to move, to train. Got you. You have to find your own gym, your own playground. Yeah. And COVID was a perfect time for that. And it's like, if you can't get out and do something, mm. go for a walk somewhere. Yeah. Make something happen. Yeah. And you're going to get better in that. And you get better in that right. regard. That's mm-hmm. awesome, man. Great, great advice. Mm-hmm. Get you guys moving when you're in a not, not a good space, when you're in a dark spot. Correct. Got to get your mind moving, get Correct. your body moving as well. That's phenomenal. Um, so anything else that's coming up for you? Like, are, what, what are you working on other than that retreat that's coming up? Um, what, do you, what are you working on for yourself? You have your own personal projects. You have, uh, you know, any sort of challenges that you're trying to, you know, work towards building on? Like, what what's up for what's new for Jason? Other than uh, being a head trainer, because I didn't get a lot of responsibility <laughs> there. Yeah, that already is a lot, and that's already a blessing. Yeah. Um, it's to collab with, with more trainers. Okay. I've always, for years, I mean, I've done it online with yeah. a few trainers in the past, but now I'm just like, I want to reach out to more people. I yeah. want to get connected with more people. Yeah. Because this is great. We're in an industry where we can help people become mm-hmm. better versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. And what better way to connect? And, you know, create um, an environment and a safe, healthy environment that people can look and say, hey, mm-hmm. I know this guy. I know this girl. Mm-hmm. They're working together. They're they're motivating us. They're creating an environment that makes us want to get out and move and yeah. do something. Yeah. So I feel like moving on and now, this is, yeah. this is where I want to go. I'm trying to figure out how to tie this in. All right. So <laughs> now, we get, now we're really getting something. So <laughs> I've had several conversations with people mm. about why it is here in this city. It's so hard to get people connected. Um, Everybody has their own individual community, which is cool. But to get people to come together on a greater scale or even just have trainers collab with each other. Mm. Why do you feel like it's so difficult to have that happen? Time, for one. They don't want to make the time Mm. or they feel something needs to be tied with it. Mm. Um, Competition Mm. and unfortunately, ego. It definitely, it it comes down to to that in the end. Do Do you feel like you have competition? Yeah. And that's okay. Competition okay. is okay, okay because you're in an environment. Mm-hmm. It, it's there's many trainers. Yeah. There's many people who sell food. There's many people who do certain things. Many yeah. restaurants. Yeah. And if you're aware that you're in competition, mm. it's how you treat that competition. Okay. Are you always trying to fight that person, or you want to aside with them and and see certain traits that you have, and go along with it? Mm-hmm. Because in the end of the day, everybody can give their best. Everybody yeah. can. Help a person become better. Yeah. It's not a matter of this person is better than this person, this person is better than that. Yeah. It's what do you prefer in the end. Right. And that's what it is. Okay. If you see it more as that, yeah. then you're more open-minded to meeting up more people and creating a better environment. Okay. So what what do you think that we can do to make opportunities like this happen more? Put the ego aside. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's for one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, more support. Yeah. I feel like there's not enough support. That's that. Yeah. Man. You're really good at that. I always tell you I appreciate that, many man. I appreciate times, that. you know, yeah. I'm being straight and honest. Every time you, and then I, I go to your page and I see your posts and I see your stories. And even when you reach out to me, it's like, this man, he's the real deal. Mm. He always reaches out to people. He shouts them out. He generally cares about what they do. I appreciate that, man. And, he, and it's the real truth. Yeah. That's it's 100%. Yeah. And that's the people I love to mesh with because yeah. they, we understand. We're on that same wavelength. And yeah. I feel like that gets lost because we get so caught up. We're trying to prove something to the world. We're trying mm. to do it for the views, trying to do this. If we keep fixating on that and we give what Instagram wants, mm. you're losing yourself. Yeah. Do what you love and then everything will resonate around it. The views will come when they come. You know, yes, sometimes you feel like, oh, this was so good. I feel like not a lot of people are, are seeing it. Mm. It can get frustrating because you yeah. have a certain amount of followers. Yeah. You want your content to meet those followers. Yeah. And say, like, why isn't it? Why am I only getting 10 people watching it? Yeah. I want 100. I want 1,000 to see it. Yeah. So that's frustrating. But if you put that aside mm-hmm. and just focus on the goal and what you put out there in the end, yeah. that will, it, will, it, will, it will reel itself back. I okay. Feel. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good, good advice mm-hmm. to not think about the numbers of it. Just think about what you get to, the, the chance to do, the opportunity to do, and who you're working with as Correct. well. Because there are a lot of people out there. Listen, I'm putting an APB. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that I'd love to sit down and have a conversation with. Mm. We can go for, we can run, we can train, whatever the deal is, because the more you can create that kind of community. Now, if Jason has an event, I'm there. If, uh, you know, this trainer has an event, I'm there. If this person has an event, I'm there. I think that the more that those things are interconnected, Correct. then everybody gets a chance to kind of see everyone at their best. Correct. And then you are you can build something phenomenal. They have that in Ontario, in Toronto. Oh, um, I find that it's more cohesive there mm. than in than here. Than in here, Montreal. correct. 
Which is unfortunate because there are a lot of great talents out here yep, that's that true. are doing amazing things, working well with their clients and they're you know, building their brand and whatnot. Oh, and I'm very much, I'm a huge supporter of Support Local, right? I'm wearing a shirt right now. Sweater North Point. North Point. Shout out to my guy Preston. Um, I'm all about supporting local. So if you have something that I'm like, hey, this is great. I could support or, or like provide information about what you have coming up. I'm going to do that. Yeah. To me, it only makes sense that we continue to share because you can't save everybody. Correct. You can't train everyone. Correct. Right. There's only so many hours I have in my day. And what what good would it do me mm. to give somebody poor quality because I don't want that person to have mm. um, um, their own clientele and I'm worried about competition. That's silly. Man. Correct. That's silly. Correct. 100%. It just is it's weird to me. but You're you very know. good at it. And I think it needs that needs to be known. Like not everybody can make the time to do that or want to make the time to do it, mm. but you do it. I appreciate oh, yeah. it, man. It's, it's 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 what it's how you learn. You know you, you know the saying goes. Jesus said, "You receive free, give free." Mm-hmm. So sometimes you get things, and then you're able to say, "Okay, well, how can I give back in some way?" Correct. You know, and my my goal has always been to connect with people who want to give back. Correct. I don't care. You can put my name last on the list. I have no. I don't care. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter to yeah, me. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not about that for me. It's about creating experience for people that. They're going to be able to say, yo, I went to this event. Jason was there and Kareem was there and, and Kadeem was there and Zul was there and this person was there. Mm. And it was awesome. Right. Like that's the, what you want to have happen mm-hmm. because that's how people will remember you. Yep. 100. You don't want people to remember you as, man, I went to this guy's class. I paid 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. The <laughs> last was, thing you want. That's you know? the last thing you want to have happen, yeah, yeah. right? So there's so many opportunities for us to, to build things together. So I do know that we, we talked about this. We're going to make that happen. Yep. Create some more collaborative, some more collaborative uh, opportunities out right. there, man. Jason, listen, I've had a pleasure getting to know you, getting to know your background, and having a great conversation thus far. It's been a phenomenal time to be able to spend here. I know it's been a while. We've been trying to get this done for so much time, yeah, yeah. but like you said before, some things just don't align, and Correct. when they do, magic happens Correct. and things are great. Um, so you're working F forty five. You're there what five days a week, six I'm days there, a week, uh, three days a week. So Three Tuesdays, days Wednesdays, and Friday mornings. Okay. Are you guys offering any sort of special promotions? People can come check you? Um, yeah. Well, if they're given a trainer's name, okay. they get a week free. Okay, nice. And uh, then we can kind of work out a plan for them. But um, yeah, that's what we have for Okay. Now. So if you give, if you say Jason out there, <laughs> yeah. you will get a week for free. You get a week for free. If you say Kadeem Robbie, you will get a week for free. Correct. So that's awesome that you guys are able to build something mm-hmm. over there. And I wish you nothing but success. Much with that happening for sure. Um, well, last question: If you were to speak to your younger self, <laughs> <laughs> you were to speak to your younger self, and you were to give your younger self advice today, three things you would give them advice on: uh, continue being patient, cool, continue dreaming big, mm. and um, just continue to respect. I feel. With those three, you know, the patience, because we're, we're always impatient. Mm-hmm. You know, even though we say we're patient, mm-hmm. there's something about it that's impatient. Mm-hmm. Um, the respect, because what you do for people, it, it, it'll come back. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're mean to people, you're not nice to them. God will have his way to show you <laughs> the next path in your the life. The next path you are, yeah. And, you know, just embracing life and just continue to work hard and really not give up. I know how cliche as it sounds, it's mm-hmm. the truth. Really, if you believe in something, you just go for it 100%. Yeah. And then we'll dole it back. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. Well, we appreciate the fact that you believe you believe in yourself, and you obviously have created an amazing impact on the fitness community here Thank in the you. West Island, appreciate in Montreal, that. and across the world, because you're in Europe, you're in Barbados, you're <laughs> in the Caribbean, you're doing all things all over the place, guys. Right. Guys, if you never get a chance to check out Jason Decor Out the Door on Instagram, please make sure you follow him. I'll make sure that I tag him, uh, not only in this episode, but I'll make sure I have been sharing his posts and going forward, so you guys will be able to check us out in our stories to see what it's about. We really do appreciate your time coming through, sitting down and talking with us as usual. As you know, the first five podcasts back in the building again is available on spotify apple google and now amazon music in addition to other streaming platforms around the world make sure that you follow us on instagram at the first five podcast for your weekly dose of mental motivation and inspiration as we aim to help you to be the best version of you one percent at a time also for free fitness game and movement inspiration make sure you follow us at goodfit underscore fitness as well more episodes more interviews and more energy is on the way Please keep it locked. Please keep supporting. And please keep supporting this guy because he's out here doing big things, man. It's your boy, Coach K. It's Jason Decor. We out of here, guys. Peace out. Till the next time. Many blessings and peace.